Okay, so the Canadian government needs to collect tax to pay for the things that it needs to do. So the question is, who should it collect that tax from? Well, this evolves over quite some time, and it's a really a, a, a legal matter because there's lots and lots of people in the world, and some of them are going to be subject to Canadian tax, and some of them aren't. And so the ones that are subject to Canadian tax, we call, very creatively, taxpayers. The question is, who is a Canadian taxpayer? Who is it that whose income, who, who should be sharing in the costs of running Canada? So there's a, a number of ways countries can go on this, and Canada is among those that, um, well, here, let's think about the options. So you could do it based on citizenship, because we have this idea that if you want to be part of Canada, you, um, the, the, if you're like a full-fledged member of Canada, you're a Canadian citizen. Or are you? You could do it based on residence. You could do it based on lots of other things, but these are really the two that it comes down to. And what Canada chooses is residence. So what that means is we will tax people based on whether or not they are in Canada participating in Canada. And what this comes down to is a rather squishy term called do you have a continuing state of relationship with Canada? Right? So really in a nutshell are you dating Canada? <laughs> so no I mean are you th but that's really what it's saying is are, are you are you are you in Canada an item? Um, are you seeing Canada to the exclusion of seeing all other countries in the world? And so this raises another um, important point. So there's a couple few things here. So in Canada, citizenship doesn't matter. So it's not a factor in tax. In the U.S., just to note, it's the only factor, but not in Canada. Okay, and other countries do it differently. But the other thing to note too is that you have to be an individual has to be resident somewhere. Okay, so this becomes important in the cases where we're, it's not really an entirely clear. So let's just make me like me go back, take a step back, and make sure I'm making this clear. This these are individuals that we're talking about right now. We'll talk about corporations quickly at the end. So these are people, individuals, you. Are you a Canadian resident? Well, most of you are, although I, there may be a few in our class who um, their homes are somewhere else. They're international students and they're here visiting. And if that's the case for you, then you may not be liable for Canadian tax. Um, but we'll, we'll try not to make this too personal for anybody. Um, so the important thing, you have to be resident somewhere and uh, your citizenship doesn't matter. So it all comes down to this. Do you have a continuing state of relationship with Canada? And there are every person in the world will fit into one of three buckets. You in any given tax year. You are either a full-time resident, you are a non-resident, or you are a part-year resident. Okay, and these are mutually exclusive buckets, meaning you have to, every person on the planet fits into one and only one of these buckets in any given tax year in Canada. So the easy cases, people who, who have been, who were born in Canada, have never left its, its wonderful shores, those people are full-time residents, very obvious, they're here. Right, they're physically here, and and their families are here. Everything is going on is here. Non-resident, some somebody who was born in Japan lives has lived in Japan their whole lives, could maybe find Canada on a map, but has definitely never been here. They are going to clearly be a non-resident of Canada. Part year resident is going to be the the one where I mean, some of the trickiness arises, but it isn't always clear whether somebody is a full-time resident or not. Um, and there are definitely these times where we have people, especially with a, with a, a common border, so with the U.S., people who um, may 
look like their home is in the U.S., but they they come to Canada so often that there's this idea of a deemed resident. Okay, and that's a deemed full-time resident. And really, this can come down to facts, but what this means it usually boils down to is, are you in the country for any part of 183 days out of the year. If you are, then even though you kind of look like a non-resident, we may bump you into this bucket. Other than that, the facts are fairly clear. And why does it matter? Well, it matters a lot because these people, full-time residents, are taxed on every dollar earned worldwide. So wherever you earn a dollar, the Canadian government has a right to tax it. Whereas these people, non-residents, are only taxed on Canadian source, and that becomes a difficult thing to figure out, but we'll pretend it's easy for now, Canadian source income. So income that is sourced in Canada is taxed taxable in Canada whether you live in Canada or not okay so that's why it matters and and the distinction becomes important the tricky some of the trickiness arises I don't know what I just did there some of the trickiness arises when you either arrive or leave but this is not complicated for us. This is not something that we need to, to pull out our, our vast memorization skills for at this point. There are two choices. You either have a clean break or you have a fresh start. So these are just terms that have become part of the vocabulary. So that's not an R, that's a K. You have a clean break. So this is when you leave a, whoops, a year in which you leave and this is a year in which you enter Canada. But it's really important to note that this neither of these not temporarily. Okay now we can get into lots of existential discussion about what what is temporary and what is permanent in this life of ours but the government is is not so philosophical about things it comes down to a case by case so there's not a there's not a, a simple litmus test to say are you a part year resident or aren't you it comes down to the facts of the situation and what they really end up looking at for the most part are your your dwelling situation so do you maintain a home in canada if you're maintaining a home in canada that you can come back to it looks to us like you intend to come back so you haven't made a clean break um, you're just you're just going away for a little while but you intend to come back also your family where are they because if you're if you're telling us that you're leaving Canada for the foreseeable future then one would expect that you would want your family um, to go with you now family takes on different meanings right when you are um, when you're younger your family is your parents and then when you get a little bit older the family that they consider is is your your wife your husband um, or and and your children but these are the things that come in also property so other things did you keep your cottage and your boat and your things like does it look like you're coming you intended to come back and then social ties did you resign membership and um, when you made your clean break so these all really come down to having to establish whether or not you are um, here for the for the long haul the other or sorry gone for the long haul Fresh start is a little bit simpler. For the most part, these are people who are coming in, they've moved here because of a job or they've moved here for, for opportunities, and so it looks like they are um, going to be here to stay, but they kind of want to um, argue the other side. If they want to avoid not be liable for Canadian tax, say, listen, I'm only here for, for a little while, um, they would argue the opposite side of these things. But it's not really all that important because if they're in Canada and earning income in Canada it doesn't matter whether they're a resident or not they're liable for Canadian tax on it okay so these are the the, the kind of fundamental stuff about residents and you can see that it's it's not that complicated it's really the the in and the out the part year resident where some of the complication arises as for corporations corporations the, the principle is exactly the same we want to figure out are you a resident 
corporation, which means Canadian, or not. And there isn't a part year because um, a, a new year would begin, a new corporate or a new fiscal year would begin, and so the, the whole concept of part year is not, doesn't need to be there. And it's actually pretty clear. You are a resident Canadian corporation if you were incorporated in Canada post April 26, 1965. So quite a while ago now. But there are, st so if you are, then end of story. You're a Canadian company and you're subject to um, tax with lots of other provisions that we'll never talk about um, from an in international tax, but you're subject to Canadian t um, tax on your worldwide income um, if you were incorporated in Canada after April of 1965. Of course, so that leaves two categories of companies that we have to think about. Ones that were incorporated in Canada pre in Canada pre 19 that that same day and I'm just getting lazy um, what about them and also obviously anybody who's incorporated outside of Canada ever so if you weren't incorporated in Canada is it still possible to be considered a resident of Canada and it is so the continuing state of relationship thing is that the, whoops, the principle is the same here but what we're looking for here to establish that is where are your central management and control so where is that because where that is that's the corporation's home okay but this becomes difficult right it becomes not so easy to figure out whether you're there or not and why does it matter again? Because it's exactly the same. If you're a resident in Canada, considered a resident in Canada, then you are uh, liable for Canadian tax on your income. If you're not, again, you're liable for, so you pay tax on Canadian source income only. Now again, that that's not a simple thing to figure. Source is not a simple thing to figure out, but for now we'll we'll assume that it is, and we'll leave it at that.